So now this is just a really a review of what you're getting into in the book, and particularly the first three of my chapters. First is the concept of present value. I got some cash flow, it could be rep, EBITDA or EBIT per share, net operating income earnings or dividends per share, it doesn't matter, it's some cash flow. And what you're going to do is you're going to discount this cash flow to the present based on some required rate of return. Okay? This I is called the discount rate, it's called the opportunity cost of capital, it's also called the required rate of return, it could also be the cost of the debt, it could be the cost of the equity, it could also be the weighted average cost of capital. It's interchangeable. But the basic calculation, the mathematics are the same. Okay, so if this is debt coupon divided by debt cost of capital for value of bonds. This is cash flow from earnings per share or dividends divided by the cost of the equity. It's going to be the value of the stock. This could be the cash flow from the company divided by the weighted average cost of capital of the firm. It's going to give you the value of the firm. So what you'll learn over the over the semester is you're going to learn about you know not only this equation but how to expand it. Future values is, is you got the cash flow multiplied by some future value interest factor. As you can see, the present value factor and the future value factor are basically the same. So if I'm going to, I want a 14% rate of return over a seven year period, it's 1.14 to the seventh power. That future value factor you can multiply by the cash flow is going to give you the future value of the asset. The key is discounted cash flow, return value of money. Okay, this is it. This is the most important concept you'll take from the class. I'm going to get cash flows per year going out in time over a holding period. It could be three years, five years, seven, or ten. These, as you can see, these present value factors for each year, your one, two, three, four, are going to go to the first power, the second power, the third power, the fourth power. Okay? So as the cash flows go out in time, the discounts of these cash flows are going to shrink because these discount factors are going to get really big. Okay? So when you do a present value of future cash flows, you're going to discount these cash flows. Let's say it's for 10 years. And at the end of the 10 years, I'm going to get the cash flow in that 10 year, 10th year. And I'm also going to get the value in which I'm going to sell the asset. It could be the equipment. Could be the firm, could be the stock. So I'm going to get those two cash flows in the last period, I'm going to discount these back, and I'm going to get the present value. That's called discounted cash flow. Then I'm going to subtract out the cost or the acquisition cost, and I'm going to get a net present value. If the net present value is positive, I'm going to accept it, I'm going to do it. If it's negative, I'm going to reject it, I'm not going to do it. If the net present value equals to zero, my rate of return on the asset is equal to my required rate of return or my discount rate. If, it's, if the NPV is positive, then my internal rate of return is greater than my discount rate. And I will teach you the mechanics. I will go through and I will build up uh, investment and a financial decision making <coughs> matrix, and I will walk you through those. Okay? to get to the discounted cash flow as quickly as possible, get to the present values, net present values, internal rates of return, calculations as soon as possible, and then memorize that. And I will, I will grind you on that. Because no matter where you go, in any position, you're probably going to be doing pro formas, cash flow statements, and you're probably going to be using these net present values, present values, and internal rates, rates of return calculations to make financial decisions. That's all I got. All right. Thank you. Thank you.